This is the office of the assistant treasurer. It's a magnificent room because this is where the public would come to do business with the Mint. The ceilings here are over 30 feet tall and the detailing of the architecture is magnificent. You'll see in the cove ceiling here, the floor to lee design that goes all the way around. You'll also see there's a little balcony that surrounds the room with a very detailed railing. And this railing was designed specifically for this room. In fact, so much of the mint was designed specifically for here. You didn't go out to the hardware store to get the items that you wanted for this. So for instance, if you'll come over here, look at the door handles here with the key and the scales on it. Again, this was designed specifically for this building. The same thing with the brass hinges here, all with this beautiful intricate design work, all designed just specifically for this building. So again, they wanted people to come in here and feel how grand it was, feel how solid it was, so that they would be comfortable dealing with this place. Now, let's walk into the next room over. This is the Office of the Mint another room where people came to get gold coins, silver coins, that kind of thing. And this safe over here is where they would keep those for individuals who came in to purchase coins. Uh, it's not a huge safe, not like downstairs where they have the giant vaults where they keep, kept all the bullion, but here they would keep the coins so you could come in, you could buy your coins at counters that would be set here and they would go in, grab those for you and bring them out. Again, a magnificent room. Uh, notice these pilasters here with the flutes all the way up to the capitals with kind of an egg and dart uh, design on it. This was the last building that Alfred Mullet designed. And one gets the sense that it was really his swan song, that this was uh, he's gonna be his piece de resistance at the end of his career to design a building more magnificent than anything he had done before. And he certainly achieved that. Here we have a different chandelier design, but yet there's about a dozen of them here. Again, all designed specifically for this building. And notice it's got the five-pointed star, the same star that's on the American flag. And over here, let me show you this. Here are the iron shutters that in the days of the mint, these heavy iron shutters could be closed off to protect the mint from anybody trying to enter it or from fire. Again, all custom design for this building. This is the silver melting room. This is where all the massive amount of silver ore was brought down from the Comstock load in western Nevada. While the gold rush put California and San Francisco on the map, the Comstock load produced over 10 times the wealth of the gold rush. Most of it silver ore. And most of that silver ore flowed down from western Nevada here into the old mint and this is where it was melted down into silver bars and ingots. The equipment for the old mint was powered by steam. 
And to make that steam, they had these super boilers here that were fed from coal down at the bottom that heated up the water, created the steam that went through these pipes up into the equipment upstairs where it was used to stamp the coins and create the gold ingots and bars. This is the gold room. This is where the gold coins were made. And right here is where the gold coin press was. You can see how worn it is, and you can see how gouged it is because it was huge, heavy equipment to be able to handle all of the gold pressed here. Now, during the operation of the mint from 1874 to 1937, it coined over $750 million in gold and silver coins. It also, at one time, held a third of all the gold reserves in the United States, making it the Fort Knox of the West. The most popular coins they minted here at the San Francisco U.S. Mint were the Morgan silver dollars and the $20 gold piece. The San Francisco Mint closed in 1937, but it did produce beautiful coins for almost 63 years.